right. Well, it's great to be back in the Shire and welcome you all here. Um, I wanted to frame out some of the ways that we're thinking about our product and thinking about the product in the context of the world that we do live in, what, what you heard really from, from Alex and from Mike there. Oh, can we go back one, sorry? Yeah, so it's clear, as we just discussed, that the geopolitical consensus that we've had over the last 40 years, that the world would get more stable, more predictable, more, more peaceful, that's, that's crumbled. And I think something that's less clear, but equally true, is that the software consensus that underpinned that view has also crumbled. In a world that's getting more predictable, the most important thing that you can focus on is the perfect plan, uh, the perfect prediction of what's gonna happen. But uh, it, when, when the plans went awry, when all of this stuff crumbled in a world that we're actually living in, one where things are becoming less certain, more unpredictable, less clear, the one thing you actually know is that your plan is wrong and that all of your alpha as an institution is going to come down to your ability to react to the error in your plan, to react to reality. And that, I think, is where we, you know, all the pundits said that software was going to eat the world. From my perspective, between Ukraine, inflation, COVID, and the aftershocks that have followed, it looks much more like the world ate software. You know, how much software that predated those events really withstood the test of time and really helped companies navigate those challenges. And from my experience on the front lines, almost, almost none. And I think the government has always really understood this, that it's not about your plan. You know, I think the saying is that plans are worthless. Planning is invaluable, but plans are worthless. And of course, the saying is that no plan survives first contact. And that's really the, the, the formative experiences that we had is working with customers that viewed the real capability, like how you were going to win, not just be more productive, but how are you going to win as your ability to react to reality faster than the other party could. And now that's what we're seeing. Like in a time of, um, in a time of stability, it was all beta. The rising tide lifted all boats, you know? Yeah, okay, focus on efficiency. And in, in the reality that we live in, you know, alpha is back in a big way. And, and that is going to be your competitive advantage as an institution going forward. So when we look at Ukraine and COVID and inflation, what we see is that literally every function of every business is breaking under these stresses. And, and what's interesting about the phenomenon, and Ari's question actually hit it, it, it's not the, you know, the aftershocks are more profound and dislocative than the initial earthquake itself. And those things are continuing to ricochet around. And it seems very unlikely that we're gonna get into some sort of, you know, emergent stable equilibrium like this. It's, it's actually gonna be a place that we have to continue responding and reacting. And, and that is exactly the world that we built our software for, to be the agility layer that would help your enterprise respond to everything that's changing here. So whether that's optimizing patient bed utilization and nurse staffing levels at a hospital whose fundamental labor model and backlog has been dislocated massively from, from COVID and everything after that, um, or it's driving supply chain visibility into what's clear to build. We have started 25 major supply chain projects this year alone or that's managing logistics in the face of now increasing fuel prices, but before that it was truck shortages, worker shortages, and increasingly tight um, fulfillment windows where you can actually go and capture the revenue. Or keeping automotive factories open when you realize that every single wiring harness that you put, you know, $5 part that you put into your car comes from Ukraine. Like how do you dynamically reprioritize your customer orders and the production plan that you're gonna have in a way that, that keeps everything fully employed here? And that's, that's how we think about, um, you know, that, that is the world that for a better part of 15 years we built our software for. So when we think about our, our software platforms, we really think about them as operating systems, not systems of insight, but really the way that your business runs. You know, operating systems that, that aspire to act as the nervous system, as the cardiovascular system of your enterprise. Gotham, Foundry, Apollo. It, it creates a single pane of, of glass to help you execute your mission in Gotham's context, or run your business with Foundry, or deliver your software in Apollo's sense. And Gotham is very much focused in the defense context on uh, AI enabling the kill chain for deterrence. Really a lot of the themes that Alex had spoken about here, but for us that means operating across all domains from space to mud, and integrating every sensor with every shooter, and getting faster and faster at helping humans make decisions 
uh, and, and outcompete the adversary here. In the foundry context, now, now going from kill chains to supply chains, it's really about connecting and integrating the decision making within your value chain, not just within your four walls, but really the entirety of your value chain, from, from your suppliers to your customers. That's the equivalent of from your sensors to your shooters there. And in doing so, it's focused on making you more different, not more similar. You know, this is not productivity software like Zoom that's just about you know, improving how efficient you can do something. It's about being the ultimate expression of your strategy as a business, which is going to be different than your competitors, it's going to be different than adjacent industries. Uh, that, that, that is the nature of Alpha, that you have to be more different and differentiated than anyone else. And these platforms, they focus on, on time to value. Like that's where we see real transformation happen here. And of course it took us 15 years and $3 billion to, to build this software, but uh, what it's really allowed us to do is to build the software the world needs before it knows it needs it because we've had this monastic commitment to focusing on delivering end-to-end -end outcomes. You know, we were able to power the Afghan evacuation with 22 hours notice. We were able to build the US and UK COVID vaccine supply chains with five weeks notice. Of course, it's, it's more like 15 years plus five weeks, or 15 years plus 22 hours. Uh, but that, that monastic focus is what helps you understand what is left to build. Uh, and, and that, as a result, is, is powering this flywheel for us. Where we're just building so much new product, product that we, we hope will meet the moments for the world that we see coming uh, in, in, in the near term here. Some of this you can see uh, in, in throughout the conference here, a software like Meta Constellation, which has a digital twin of commercial space co um, collection capabilities and allows you to reimagine how you actually drive tasking. And certainly that has an effect on the battlefield, but it's also helping utility scale solar companies image very remote solar insta installations and better understand how to do predictive maintenance and how to optimize their solar production. Software like SkyKit that ten takes Meta Constellation and puts it in a portable form factor for, for soldiers in the field to actually use to drive operational tasking. Or Pipeline Builder, which has transformed the economics of data integration. It, it, at the NHS in the UK, it, is, it has tripled the speed by which they're able to bring data from 400 different hospitals together uh, for clinical outcomes. Foundry Unchained now means that you can run Foundry on top of your extant cloud data warehouses. And a uh, FedStart, which builds on our Apollo offering, is going to enable software companies in the US to actually get FedRAMP and IL-6 certification literally overnight. So just more and more stuff here that we think is gonna be key to, to the events that are about to come. But this is FoundryCon, so let's focus a little bit on, on Foundry for a second here. When I think about Foundry and the world that, that we're likely to see, the challenges that our customers face, there, there are, I think, really three critical capabilities that every institution is going to need to, to navigate this. And uh, the first of these is that, is that Foundry makes the marginal cost of data integration effectively zero. The cynical way to think about Palantir is that it took something as sexy as James Bond to motivate engineers to work on a problem as boring as data integration. Right? Uh, but we have productized this. Like Instead of having lots of humans going out and trying to bring data together, we have software-defined data integration. And for things that cannot be completely productized, you have Pipeline Builder that just helps you do it 10 times faster than your alternative. And this means data integration goes from being a liability to an asset. We were able to integrate with s each of the 6,000 hospitals in the US in the first three weeks of the pandemic to create the first national level of visibility into ICU bed utilization, PPE consumption rates, and ventilator capacity. Each of these hospitals has a system that's kind of unique and bespoke and messed up in its own way. That's the, that's the nature of these things. And you can't really go at that speed or scale unless you have software that's writing its own data pipelines for you. We were able to bring 26 different ERP systems together in less than two weeks. You know, not, not two decades, not two years, in less than two weeks. And this is this single pane of data. Right? I think that's a really crucial capability and concept for every institution. But data integration is not inherently valuable. It's a means to an end. It gets you to the starting line. What are you supposed to do now with this integrated data? And the second major pillar is that people will need to radically transform their own marginal cost of application development. How long is it gonna take you to build new applications that actually operate your business? I don't mean dashboards that just give you insights. I mean actual applications that are interconnected to each other that, allow, that integrate with your underlying transact, your existing 
extant transactional investments so that you can allocate inventory, so that you can change your production plan, so that you can task a drone. And that's absolutely crucial. In the first two days of, the, of having that integrated data foundation, the US government was able to build their national level PPE allocator. So you can think about having ICU bed utilization, P ventilator capacity, inventory levels. That, that, that's the demand side of the forecast. Where might things need to go? Now, how do I, man how do I connect that up into my supply chain? And just having, you know, it's, it's not two months, it's not many months, it's two days to build an application that frontline users and all 50 states and tribes and jurisdictions can use to drive this decision making on the front line. And the third capability that integrates that operational reality with strategy is the digital twin. And I, to me, this is one of the most a native modeling and simulation capability that allows you to react to reality. You know, if your plan was perfect, you wouldn't really need this. But when things happen in the world, when your supplier gives you half of what they said they were going to give you, when the disease spreads in ways that you hadn't anticipated, you need to be able to ask the question, what can I do now? And what can I do now is in of itself a function of your own goal, your own strategy and institution. Are you trying to optimize revenue, optimize production, um, optimize customer fulfillment and satisfaction? The answer to that question will depend on the day, will depend on your goals, will depend on what's going on here. How do you get the system to generate courses of action for you, to use the government terminology on this, that enables the operator to quickly execute something and then understand the full consequences of what might happen, not only within their own function. You know, it's great if you can buy something 30% off if your job is procurement, but if that has a 40% less yield in production, you know, you're just passing the buck on. So how do you model this? This is, this is the integrated value chain here. How do you model this holistically, understand what's actually in the best interest of the business? Uh, and so th these are, this is really the core of what we've invested in, continue to invest in Building Foundry. I think you'll see some of these themes from the speakers today. And that, that's really the most important part here, which is while I am really excited to have you all here and hear your feedback and what's working, what's not working, and in my own little lens, imagine the future of what we'll continue to build, I think the most exciting part for you all is to hear from each other and, and hear about the challenges and experiences and, and what could be. So thank you once again for joining us.